Today I want to talk about wokeism in Saints Row. Okay, okay, calm down people. I know that this is one of the subjects that will definitely spawn some controversy, but with the recent interview from a Volition dev that directly addressed wokeism in the reboot and the removal of core features due to it, I think it's a conversation that is perhaps more necessary than ever. But before we dive straight in, I do want to discuss the prior games. I want to talk about how what would be considered more edgier content did used to fit into Saints Row, and why I think that balance of edgier content is much better than the current balance of edgier content. Now I know that talking about wokeism can be a bit of a tricky issue. I don't need mayhem on Twitter about how I hate everyone and everything, so I feel it's smart to specifically mention exactly what I mean by wokeism in this video nice and early so nobody gets the wrong idea. So in this video, I'm specifically going to be talking about the removal or tone down of features and humour in the latest Saints Row, whilst also showcasing that past features and humour, whilst perhaps seen as controversial, actually added to the Saints Row experience. So just to clarify, by wokeism in this video, I do not mean diversity. Saints Row has always been diverse and that argument is stupid. So Saints Row 1 to 4 are by no means offensive games. I've played them for years since I was a kid, and at no point have I ever felt the games were offensive in any way. But that's not to say they don't have their edgier moments and themes. Sister, would you like to try some of my gluten-free, all-natural couscous flavored granola? No thanks, I have to finish making signs for the anti-war rally I'm going to. That sounds delicious though, where'd you get it? On the rag. On the rag? What's that? Well, it's the one store in Stillwater that's designed just for us and our hang-ups. How are you supposed to enact social change if you're not wearing certified dolphin-safe clothes? But that supports consumerism. Well, when has a little hypocrisy ever stopped us? <sighs> oh, I never thought of it that way before. Well, I'm going there right now to get a moo, -moo and some hemp thongs. Have fun. Are we still on for our day tonight where we sit around and not shave our legs? You betcha. On the rag. You may be annoying, but you're worth it. There's certainly a few jokes that wouldn't land today, and some of the themes perhaps aren't the best either. I think a good example of this is how in Saints Row 3 they had a major focus on sex, whereas in Saints Row 2 it was handled really differently. I think it's all about balance, and for example, removing sex from Saints Row in general is not a fix to this. You need to balance the sex jokes, you need to balance the sex references. The removal of it, or the tone down to the point is practically non-existent, wouldn't be a proper solution. And yes, there are definitely plenty of other things that could perhaps be seen as touching the line, but in my opinion, Saints Row very rarely cross that same line. All the things usually made sense in the context of the game, you know, whether it being a gang game and all. And I guess that this brings me to Volition's latest title, Saints Row 2022, a reboot of the gang simulator of the same name. I think before we go any further, it's really important to state that this game is an 18 plus gang simulator. It's a game designed for you to take part in gang activities, and whilst the series has definitely departed from its more grounded roots, when rebooting the game people expected the gang element to return in form. This also of course is going to include the subject matter that is almost necessary. You'd need violence, you'd need robberies, you'd expect drugs, you'd expect sex references. To put it frankly, gangs aren't supposed to be nice. And whilst you don't need to go fully hard on the gang stuff, you should at the very least include some elements to make up the gang culture to at least a certain degree. Otherwise, we're left with a watered down version of what it's trying to replicate. So with Saints Row 2022, we did get an ever so slight return in the sense that the gang system came back over aliens. But fans noticed for a gang game, it was just remarkably safe. Violence seemed lesser, drug and sex talk was borderline non-existent, robberies were far and few between, anti-police missions seemed very little in the grand scheme of things. At the time, I never really associated this with wokeism. If anything, I thought it was just trimmed down to hell and all the good missions got cut, which, to a certain degree, I am correct on still. But in the recent Volition interview that came out, it was told that Volition had three real major issues. The first was bad directors and producers. These people kept micromanaging the game and kept changing up the game's idea. This led to a game that didn't exactly know what it wanted to be and I feel you can kind of get that whilst playing the game. Following this, you've got the split in developer ideology. Some devs didn't like the style of 1 and 2. Other devs didn't enjoy the sexual nature of 3. Yet they were all working on the reboot. This led to a game that almost felt like none of the prior games to a certain extent. And then there's the inclusivity team. This team generally is a pretty standard and necessary practice in game development, however the extent they had an input in this game was far over normal limitations. And the features called for removal 
were some of the features that make up the Saints Row formula. I mean, we're talking really big stuff, like robberies, mugging, NPC kill rewards, and new revolutionary features we'd never seen before, like stealing NPCs' clothes. And the reasons for these cuts, they're just downright embarrassing, truthfully. Cutting robberies from stores? Because people might draw parallels to the BLM riots? Are you joking? Seriously? You want to cut robberies in a gang game because you fear people might make associations like that? It actually left me in shock when I first heard this. This is one of those ideas that never should have left the room it was mentioned in, let alone get into the final product of, once again, a gang game. And the reason for removing clothes? God, the less said about that the better. And of course, this is the time in the video I want to draw your attention back to that lovely 18 plus age rating on the box. When making a game for adults, you need to understand who you are targeting. These are fully grown people. Do not treat them like idiots. We know when you're adding robbing to a gang game, you're not trying to draw parallels to politics. I mean, it's a damn gang game for Christ's sake. What the hell do you think we're buying it for? I mean, the story was really watered down to hell too. Certainly no big risks were taken to say the least. And hearing some of the missions that got cut, oh my god, it's painful. But I recommend sticking around for Godzilla's NDA video for more info on that. Let's just say there's a lot more you guys deserve to know about this game that he will be mentioning. But heck, I'll tell you something you perhaps didn't know. Do you want to know who wrote this game's story? Steve Jaros. The same guy that wrote the first four. Let me make this simple for you. The guy that wrote this? Wrote this. Where the hell did it go wrong? Better Google it. <laughs> what exactly are you looking up? And I, uh, I basically have the taste of a 16-year-old girl. <laughs> and to be honest, this puts me in quite a difficult spot here. I've been sitting here banging on about how Deep Silver forced this, changed that, did this. If anything, Volition deserves some blame too. Because it sounded like select members of that team were doing the exact same thing. I reached out to some staff to try and understand what the hell was happening. And the general message I got back was, it was a minority of people doing these things to the game, but it was the vocal minority. They held the power. So, of course, when I do say Volition deserves blame, I specifically mean the people who influenced the game in negative ways. Whether it be the directors and producers causing too many changes, or the inclusivity team for leading people on the wrong path. And what really bugs me is, there is a balance to be found. If they wanted to tone down some of the sexual nature from Saints Row 3, I would get that completely. If they wanted to remove some of the more inappropriate lines from the earlier games, I'd get that too. I'm looking at you, flag burning. But to trim down core features that make Saints Row what it is in the hopes of pleasing politically correct people playing the game? That's stupid. Quite frankly, the inclusivity team, they played it very safe. And you can see that in the removal of key elements. Now, I have heard that perhaps the inclusivity team were a little bit misrepresented in that video, and perhaps even a bit overblown. But the bottom line is, if these specific examples are true, which by the way I can confirm they are true, who knows what else happened to the game. And I think for me, with the evidence displayed, I genuinely have to update my stance on this whole situation with the reboot. I felt that Deep Silver were truly at fault for the reboot. I thought they botched the marketing, were difficult to work with, and clearly don't know what Saints Row is. And to a certain degree, that is still very true. My prior Deep Silver video still holds up in glorious form. But what is also very true is that Volition clearly didn't know either. This game, it is the remains of a once solid product. A product picked to pieces by managers, directors, producers, and inclusivity teams, and even more. It's just seeming like the game we got was the corpse of what Saints Row was supposed to be. And I, I can't lie, this does leave me in two minds personally. It's actually been really hard for me to gather my thoughts, it was such a shock. And I know other Saints Row creators are actually struggling with it too. On the one hand, I guess I'm a little bit happy to see the Volition aren't just lazy and incompetent. That perhaps at one point before everyone had their way in, they were on track to make a solid Saints Row game. And it's not that Volition lost their skill. More so, they can't execute any game how they want due to various leaders, producers, managers, etc. But on the other hand, having the people work behind the world's leading gang game be too scared to make a gang game, it's... It's just a little bit embarrassing. And if anyone, I feel for the developers.
To have your hard work cut down to shreds because a small group of people were too scared to take a small risk. They were too scared to say, nah, the players will understand this. To release a game you know isn't what you planned or wanted and is beyond watered down and it's not because you're lazy, but it's because your hard work isn't wanted. That, that is the true tragedy of Saints Row 2022. People say it was passionless, but actually, it's far worse. It once had passion, and it was stripped of that passion. So I guess we should form some sort of conclusion here to kind of wrap up the video before it turns into an AJ Rambles. To put it bluntly, wokeism really did have an effect on this game. Not in the sense of diversity, because as I said, Saint Row has always been diverse, but in the sense that they removed beloved features because they were too scared to add them in case someone in real life got offended or contrasted them with real life politics. Ugh. They were too scared to make a dark Saint Row game, too scared to make a funny sex related Saint Row game, so we got a light hearted sitcom Saint Row. Directors and management at Volition do deserve some blame for how Saint Row turned out. They really should have learned to focus on what the game was long before it got to the stages it did. And they definitely should have had some control on the influence the inclusivity team had. And whilst I don't believe Volition is truly, totally to blame for Saint Row, quite frankly, a small subsection of Volition definitely is. They did allow these things to transpire. Wokeism, in the sense of removal of features because it might upset someone, did exist in 2022 Saint Row. And it's a worse game for it. And that is sad. But I guess, to a certain degree, maybe we should wait it out a little while. Let's see if any new information comes to light. I want to wait for Godzilla's NDA video. Maybe he can shed some light on what Saint Row 2022 was going to be before these people put their fingers in the pie. And I know that this topic is just really controversial, and I'm dipping my balls in a piranha tank here, especially as someone who has arguably pushed the narrative that wokeism wasn't the issue with Saint Row. But I guess that when presented with new, irrefutable evidence, I have got to agree. To what degree it was an issue, I don't know. No one does. But looking at what's been confirmed to be removed, it was clearly a major issue. And to me, that is the tragedy of wokeism in Saint Row 2022. So I'm ready to post my video, and then I look at a screenshot I actually include in the video, and at the top it says that Deep Silver fired some of the Volition management. So now do we go, well, that's something else Deep Silver did. Volition wasn't at fault here, or like, where does it end? I'm throwing this at the end because quite frankly, this topic is so far from being over. I mean, I've just found out that the management was hired by Deep Silver, not Volition, and that DS inherently has had some bad management go on at Volition then, because they hired the bad managers and directors and producers. I've got no scripts, I'm sorry for sending all over the place. So like, to a sudden degree, all of the stuff I said about producers, directors and management, a lot of that may actually fall onto Deep Silver's blame. <laughs> Again. Ugh. Then on top of that, I also want to clarify that, um, I don't fully know where this whole wokeism thing ends and just bad game direction starts. So like, for all I know, those two examples could be the only examples of the inclusivity team removing features. It's still bad and my video still completely stands, but, um, you know, no one has directly drawn a line about where their influence kind of stops and the directors and management starts. So, whilst this video, like, definitely targets the inclusivity team, I may at some point have to make a part two diving into the rest of all of this, because it just seems like more stuff keeps coming out and more things keep being picked up on. To be honest, it seems to be just a bit of a clusterfuck, um, and I think I do want to make a video elaborating on these things a bit more in the future, but if I try to do it in this video, I'll be contradicting things I've said, and I just don't want to get this video being a complete mess and super hard to understand, so wait up on that video, it will come out at some point. Final thing I want to add in the end here is, um, you won't see me for a little while. I know, how fun. Um, I'm going away, uh, I'm going to be spending a week uh, abroad, and then when I come back, I don't want to focus too hard on YouTube, because these last few videos, they have worked so hard to get them out, man, it's crazy. Um, I'm really proud of them, though. Um, but I want to take, like, a brief break. Hell, I may not have to do this after I come back from being abroad, I might feel completely replenished. But, um, I just want to throw it out there that, like, you won't see me for a couple weeks, maybe. Um, nothing ridiculous. I'll be around. I'm not going to pull a flippy. But, yeah, like, I'll see you when I see you, basically. 